Hello friends, hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm taking a look at the background removal AI function that's a reasonably new extension. Now that I'm back from Iceland trying to get resettled and all that, I want to dive into the extensions. I'll be doing some of those videos here in the next few weeks where I'm jumping into the different uh, technologies, if you will, and sharing some tips, tricks, ideas, things like that. Today, as I said, background removal AI. Let's just go ahead and get into it. I've got an image here that clearly I have already edited, um, but what I want to do, as you can probably imagine, is take those canoes and separate them from the rest of the photo. This would work whether I had edited the photo or not. I just happen to have an edited one nearby. So background removal AI, it is an extension that you have to purchase. And uh, in order to use it, click on Layer Properties and then click on Masking. And you'll see down here, Background Removal AI. So you click on that and it says AI is getting ready. It's figuring out what it thinks the subject is. And even if it's not 100% correct, which in this case, it's 98.7% uh, correct. 98.7% of statistics are made up on the spot, as they say. So uh, anyway, you click on that and uh, boom, I've got a pretty good uh, you know, selection. I do recommend zooming in and I went to 300 and you can see it's missing a little bit. And that's where this section here, refinements brush comes into play. So you have three different options here which is the transition zone, which is the edge, for lack of a better word, the object, which is the thing you want to keep, and the background, which is the stuff you want to get rid of. The interesting thing is transition starts with T and, and transparent starts with T, and that's this white checkerboard. That's the transparent. Object starts with O, orange starts with O, so the stuff in orange is the object, and the background starts with B, the background is blue, starts with B. So that's an easy way to keep it sort of uh, sorted in your mind. Now, what I'll often do is go in and just kind of further refine this a little bit, give it a little bit more information. Even though it had already grabbed all this, I'll often come in and just paint through some of these other areas just to make sure that it knows that I'm saying, hey, keep them. And you notice it'll make an update and um, after you're done painting, right? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go along some of this edge. And you can see it's, uh, it's that transitional zone where it's slightly missed. But I'm going to come in here and like I said, just I give it a little bit of information because uh, all it needs is just to get an idea. And then when you let go of your mouse and stop painting, it fills it in. You can see it filled it in pretty well. Now, if I wanted to, and I don't really need to here, but I could go in and I could paint more blue for the background or more uh, transparent edge if I needed to kind of refine that. In fact, I kind of do here, but I think I'm going to use just a really small brush and just come along here and just say, hey, this is part of my object I want to keep and just see how that works. What I recommend doing is zooming in like I, uh, like I just did and going really slow because it's important that you take your time and get your mask correct. While I'm recording a video, I'm not going to do a particularly great job of that, but I'm coming in here and all I'm, like I said, all I'm trying to do is give the product, the program, some information. It's AI, so it figures out a lot of stuff on its own, but you're in charge. You got to tell it what to do. So you're the boss of the AI. Just keep that in mind. Before you back out of the tool or anything like that, what I often do is I'll click uh, Refinements Brush and hide it. And you can see my edges are pretty good. Still need some refinement, which I'm not going to do here. And edges are pretty good there. But the reason I don't close the tool is because if you reopen Refinements Brush, you still got your mask and all that right there, so it's easy to just jump back in and start doing whatever it is you need to be doing. Now also, if you hit the backslash key, you can come in and actually paint and see the original photo in case that helps you get better visibility into what you're trying to paint or erase or you know do the transitional edge on. But I'm going to say I'm fine here, and then all I do is I close layer properties and I'm done with that. I'm going to go back to fit to screen. What I've got now are canoes, right? Canoes are useless uh, unless you have some water or something like that. So what I want to do is basically just stick these in a different body of water. And so that's where layers comes in. So click on plus to add a new layer and you've got various images that you can either load or some that are built in. Uh, load image if it's like on your desktop or on a drive. You can click see all if you want to see the ones that you have. And I've got one right here, which is a lake and that lake has gone in. Now it doesn't look right uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's not the same aspect ratio. My lake photo is a 16 by 9, right? But my canoe photo was a 3 by 2. So the aspect ratios don't match. That's okay. We're going to fix that. And also, you'll see that it's somewhat transparent, and that's because the opacity is at 50. We're going to change that after we get 
everything kind of situated. You want the transparent background covered with the image that you're adding. And so fit is there's your original aspect ratio with your uh, original added layer, your new background, if you will. Fill is going to take that same aspect ratio and fill the um, transparent part of your my canoe photo. So keeping the same aspect ratio, whereas stretch is basically just gonna stretch the image from whatever the aspect ratio is of that new background to whatever it is that it's trying to fit into. I hope that makes sense. Just click on it and see which one looks best. But bottom line is you need to cover up all those checkerboard areas because those are the transparent areas and you don't want that. You'd have to crop it out or whatever. It's easier just to say, hey, fill or stretch. Uh, and I'm gonna go with stretch in this case. Get that set before you do anything else, in my opinion. And then I come in, I drag the opacity to 100 and now the lake looks great and I'm going to close my layer properties but you're like where are the canoes Jim well the canoes are on the layer stack over here on the left they're on the bottom so what you got to do is you just drag them to the top and it puts them back on top which means they're now visible because the way layers are displayed it's the top layer etc etc so whatever's on top is being shown and stuff below it can be hidden now I want to move the canoes but look I'm grabbing it and hey I can't move it two things number one I'm currently on the base layer which is the actual lake photo so I want to make sure I move to the uh, the top photo which is my canoes and once I'm there I can move it around if I want to but also you see these little uh, edges here I can come in and I can uh, resize it and uh, that sort of thing. So maybe I want to position it like that. I admit empty canoes floating in a lake, kind of dumb. Uh, we're just kind of having a play here. It'd be a whole lot better if I had a person in the canoe, like with an oar, but I don't have a photo like that. So, and let's say I want to get the canoes over here and pretend like they're sitting in the lake there. But the truth is, um, maybe I want them a little bit bigger. You can also rotate. If you notice my mouse, it's got that little uh, arrow. If you go to the edges like that, you can rotate. But what I want to do is I want to make them a little bit bigger. I want them something like that, but the problem is the front of the canoes are facing out of the photo, and I've got them on this edge, and I'm of the opinion that you want the front to have plenty of space uh, to, to appear as though it's going to be moving through the photo. So you've got options over here. This one right here in particular just flips the canoes around. Now I can reposition them, and now it looks like they're coming in to the scene from the right-hand side, and they have that whole lake to go into. And then, you know, I can resize, move around, shuffle it, uh, you know, uh, up and down, whatever it is. Let's say I'm done. I can just click Layer Properties, and there we go. I've removed the background from the uh, canoes. I stuck a new background. I put the canoe layer on top, and I flipped it, and I shrunk it, and I repositioned it, and now I have canoes in a new spot. So that's how it works, and what I want to do is show you another example of what I would do. And in this case, I've got this puffin photo. I did not see any puffins in Iceland. This is not my photo. I downloaded this from Unsplash, and I'll put a link to the artist below. It's a beautiful photo of a puffin flying in and landing, but hey, I want to pretend that I saw a puffin flying in and landing in one of my photos that I just took in Iceland. So we're going to do that layer properties, masking, background removal AI. And I wanted to use a photo like this because it does work on animals. When portrait background removal came out, everybody's like, this is great, but I wanna do that for my dog or my cat or whatever. What well, you can do with animals with uh, background removal AI. And there you go, you see it's done a really good job. It's missed the very tiny edges of the claws and a tiny little bit on the feathers and a little bit in between these feathers and I will admit, this is where you got to zoom in and go slow and be very precise with your masking, none of which I'm going to do in this video because you understand it needs to be done, but me taking the time to do it in a video is just not going to be a good use of our time together. So I am going to pretend it's a perfect mask, and I've now got my checkerboard background, which means that's going away, and I've got my puffin flying in, landing on nothing, so I need to give him a spot to land. So once again, I'm going to go into my images, and I've got an Iceland photo right there. There it is. And hey, it's nearly a perfect fit. So I'm just going to click fill and you'll see it scooted out a little bit. Now it fits just right. I'm going to go ahead and bring that opacity up to 100. And then once again, I've got to go over here and grab my puffin and drop him on top. And there we go. Now I've got a puffin flying into land, but he's too big. He's got a little bit of a halo around him because the light were, uh, was different and things like that. So be sure to click on that photo. If you want to do something with it, you have to click on the layer you want to adjust. So I've clicked on the top layer. I can now adjust the puffin. Let's say I want to move him, make him a little smaller so it doesn't look like he's, uh, you know, like some pterodactyl flying in about to hit me. I'm going to do something like that. I don't really know. 
Uh, but let's say that that's where I want him to be, but I need to fix the base layer. So back over here on the layers panel, click on the base layer. And what I'm gonna do is go into develop and I'm gonna lift the exposure so that it's brighter. That's gonna help with a little bit of the halo around the edges. A better masking job would help quite a bit, but again, I didn't take the time to do that. But I think that looks better already, really just lifting the exposure because if you look at the before, very dark scene, very bright puff, and that doesn't match. So keep that in mind. You want the light and the color and those kind of things to be similar if you're trying to pull off the look of uh, what, what is called a composite photo. You want the whatever it is that you've got, in this case, the puffin, and whatever it is it's going on to, which is this background, you need the light, the colors, all those kind of things to match. So it might involve some bouncing between the layer of the puffin and the layer of the background to get things looking the way you want them to look. But maybe I want to give uh, that foreground or uh, background, actually, technically, a little bit more vibrance. Maybe I want to give it a little bit of warmth. It was a beautiful sunrise at Jokulsarlon. Uh, it's the glacial lagoon that's super famous and beautiful, as you can see. And I'm just kind of playing with the light here a little bit. And let's say that's what I want to do. Again, not perfect, but take your time mask it properly around the bird or whatever you're adding and make sure that those edges look good. But I definitely think they look a lot better than they did before. That's before you can see a much more defined kind of halo around the edges and now it blends a lot better and that's because the light is uh, more similar. You can't have a bright puffin with a dark background. It doesn't make sense. So I've done that and now maybe I need to make some adjustments to the puffin. Well, I click on them. I gotta go, I gotta click on the layer. I can't just click on the bird. There it is. And maybe I'll go into develop and maybe I'll brighten him a little bit. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll actually I'll darken him a little bit. A little bit of contrast. Maybe lift the whites a little bit, which will pop uh, that center section, his torso. Things like that. I don't really have a plan here with this puffin. Not even my puffin, uh, but someday I will see one. I didn't see any in this trip, but I don't think it's the right time of year for it. So some minor changes to the puffin. Keep in mind the saturation levels, the light uh, direction, the light intensity, uh, those sort of things. But that's how you use this tool to create whatever it is you want to create. You can put canoes in a new body of water. You can have a bird flying into an image that didn't actually exist in reality. I've taken a car and I stuck it in a lake. I mean, just playing around, it doesn't matter. You can do a lot of fun, creative things. You can also do some very serious, creative uh, composite work using this tool to help you isolate elements and just create the thing that you want to create. Bottom line, I started with a unsplash photo of this puffin. Again, link to the artist below. A beautiful image, frankly. Uh, and I've now stuck it in here and it looks pretty good. It's probably not perfect. A little bit around the edges and a little bit of the masking still needs to be kind of refined, but that's the idea. And then here's one other thing, which is you can now go in and crop it. And maybe I want to crop it vertically. So I just change the, um, the alignment there, do the transpose. And maybe I do something like that and hit enter. And now I've got a puffin flying in and it kind of fits vertically. I think it looks pretty nice. That's how this tool works, my friends. It's fun, it's different, it's creative. It's pretty easy to use, to be honest. Just take your time in the masking and think about the light and the colors and all those kind of things in the two different images that you have, the new background and uh, your, your object. Make sure that they kind of match up in order to sell the idea of the composite being real. Hope that helps, my friends. That's a uh, not really a deep dive, but basically uh, you know a closer look at Background Removal AI. Hope you have fun with it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care, and until then, adios.